open up in the AC booth. Turn off? Or just, yeah. Just low. This is fine. Okay. We're running. All right, Kane. So, uh, tell me, man, how long have you been in San Jose for right now? I've uh, been here about two and a half years. Where did you come from? Uh, came from uh, Yuma, Arizona. I uh, pretty much grew up there and um, went to college at uh, Arizona State in uh, Tempe, Arizona. And then pretty much after that, just came out here, started fighting. Was it Yuma, Arizona famous for something? There was something cool. For being hot? <laughs> There's a film they did about Yuma. Oh, the, three, the 310 of Yuma? Yeah, what's that about? Is that something about Yuma? Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's not really, but um, like pretty much they're trying to catch, like a, they're trying to take a prisoner on, onto a train and take him, because um, back then, uh, like in the olden days, they had a, a prison back then. So they were trying to take a prisoner to, to Yuma. So that's pretty, pretty much what the whole movie's about. Huh. What was it like growing up in Yuma? It was cool. Um, you know, it was uh, about 60,000 people, so it wasn't too big. But uh, I think it was perfect. You know, perfect size growing up there. It was cool, man. I liked it. You know, we were uh, like seven miles away from Mexico. I mean, my parents made it a thing for us to, like, you know, have a weekend, have like a family trip down there, to go down there, just you know, have lunch or see relatives or whatever. So it was cool. I'm happy. Yeah, my uh, my mom and dad and uh, my sister, my sister down there. So yeah, they uh, they pretty much stay stay out there, you know. Um, what, what was the decision to come to San Jose, California? Was it specific decision? Um, why? yeah, while while I was wrestling at uh, Arizona State, my coach uh, Tom Ortiz. Um, I told him that I want to start fighting. He just told me, you know, get done with the wrestling season, get my degree, and um, you know, when 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 that time comes, and he he'll get me, you know, in touch with the right people. So I mean, he did that. He uh, he got me with uh, my current manager right now, and he told me, you know, there's a good gym up in uh, San Jose for me to train, you know, MMA I MMA at. So that's what I did. I just you know, after I got my degree. I, Packed up all my stuff and just, you know, drove out of here. Hey, Kate, is that guy still behind? Huh? Yeah, our van. Uh, yeah, that's him. Okay, yeah. okay let's keep an eye on it. Yeah. Um, what made you want to get into the fight game, Kate? Um, you know what? I just, I just repeat my question when you answer yeah. it. Um, what made me want to get into, into the fight game? Um, pretty much when I wrestled, I mean, I love wrestling, but it, it just wasn't enough. You know, like I find, find, you know, at times during competition or practice that I want to hit the guy, so that's pretty much it. So is it something good? Did you get into those street fights when you were younger? Or? Uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, just come, you know, just growing up, you know, it's part of, it's part of life, you know. You get into, you, you get into stuff like that. What kind of, uh, what kind of kids can you be less this? Um, you know what? I, I was pretty calm, but uh, I'd always find myself being, you know, really athletic for, you know, for especially being a big size, you know, being a lot bigger than, you know, much like the rest of the kids. But I'd, I always find myself, you know, being just as fast as them or, you know, just as quick as them. And, um, you know, I, I always uh, was attracted to sports, you know, during, you know, like, like going, you know, growing up. What do you feel gives you the edge of all the fighters? Um, I think for me, for... Um, I think what gives me an edge as far as other fighters, you know, being the heavyweight division, I think, I think my cardio, I think, you know, my cardio is top notch, man. I, you know, with, uh, hanging with like other, like, like smaller guys during practice, you know, as far as what they do and the, the pace that they do it at, I think, you know, I keep up with them. So I think that, that's it. Uh, growing up in Yuma, Arizona, it was cool, you know. Um, it wasn't a big city, it was, you know, but it was, I mean, they pretty much had everything there. Um, you know, we, uh, Mexico was like seven miles away, so my parents made it a thing for us to, you know, to take trips down there, you know, you know during the weekends, whether it be just eating or like, you know, seeing, seeing family down there or whatever. But, um, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good place to grow up. Can you remember the specific 
and I really stood out and made you realize that you could become a fighter, that you could rumble. Was there one specific thing that you realized, I'm, I'm a dangerous guy, I can do this? Um, uh, maybe, yeah, when I was, uh, when I was in high school, um, you know, we're at a party and just, you know, stuff happens where you know, a couple of guys, just, you know, um, basically just tell, you know, we, we, we kick these guys out of a party and there was like seven guys out there and some of this, I mean, I wasn't with my friends, you know, so pretty much, you know, I pretty much took on like seven guys myself and, you know, I, I, I knew then that I could, yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as fighting or whatever, I could, you know, hold my own against, you know, against, against people, so. Um, I, you know, it wasn't like I didn't win. You know, they didn't win. It was just like even. You know, there was guys like th two guys on my legs. You know, and guys coming at me from all angles. But I pretty much, you know, just just held my own. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, did you? Did you? Did some of them get a good slap though? Yeah, definitely, definitely did. Yeah, I'm, I made sure. You know that. Who did you fist slap the hardest out of all? <laughs> Um, part of the first guy, um, I just went in, just you know, hit hit the dude. He fell, and all his all his friends, you know, got me. But uh, it was good. I mean, a good experience. You know, I didn't get hurt. You know, and um, I was pretty uh, pretty aware of where, you know what, what my surroundings were. You say you was a violent teenager growing up? No, I, you know, I growing, violent, um, growing up, I wasn't a violent teenager. You know, um, I think I think sports kept me. You know. Um, let, let me get, get off my energy, you know, in, in sports. So I didn't really, you know, pretty much after sports, you know, after, you know, after the day was over, after, after practice, I'd go home and just, you know, relax or whatever. But, you know, I didn't get myself getting into, into stuff, you know, um, that was bad, you know, just just because of sports. I really uh, like sports and really kept, found myself interested in that, so. Um, when you fight a ring, what's the difference between Violent and someone being sport. Where, where is it? Where is the line? Where is the line stop? Or maybe the line doesn't stop. What's your opinion on that? As far as what? As far as uh, the sport, the yeah, like fighting in, in the sport. Yeah. When you fight, are you fighting or are you still in sport mode or are you in fight mode? Um. Well, you know. Say when you fight. Yeah. Well, you know when I fight. Um. Yeah. You know. There's. You know. There's rules. You know. Even though sometimes it didn't seem that way. But people, you know, gotta gotta be educated in the sport. I mean, there's rules that we follow, and um, you know, anything goes in in the boundaries. So I mean, people are some people who you know go out there and fight. Are, some people are more emotionally. Some people are more um, more more of a technical fighter. They you know more more of a thinker. You know, um, with me, I think I'm both. You know, just with uh, with practice and everything. Um, you know, I'm used to it. I'm used to going in and sparring and. Um, it just take that into the end of the fight. It, it it just really propels you well. So do you see it like a fight, or is it more? What do you see more as a competition? What's your viewpoint when you come here? My viewpoint is there's definitely a fight. You know, I'm going in there. This guy is not gonna, you know, he's not gonna take, you know, what what I worked so hard for. It's definitely a fight. Um, more of a fight than a sport for me, for sure. It's my, you know, it's my, it's my livelihood. You know what I mean? I got a family now and stuff, so I want to provide for them. And then, you know, then the other guys are not gonna take that away from me. Um, how has it been since you've been fighting the UFC? Have you noticed fans? We got the fans and people recognize you. What, what kind of experience has that been like? Or it maybe it hasn't been an experience. Uh, you tell me. Uh, since I got into the UFC, um, you know what? Just around town, I'd say there's more people. Yeah, recognize me, but. I mean, I'm fine with them not recognizing me. I mean, I'm I like I'm pre I, I like uh, I consider myself a pretty shy guy, so I pretty much like to stay away from you know the limelight or whatever. So I mean, but uh, I don't think my life has changed that much. You know what I mean? I just, I'm still doing the same you know stuff I was before. So um, you don't you still bounce? Or? No, no, no more working. Uh, just you know, training. You know, training's my, my my number one job. Fighting is my number one job now. What was it like when you first got into the bouncing game? Uh, have you been a bouncer many years, or it's makes me what you was doing as a bouncer? Uh, yeah, as a bouncer. Um, 
Tell me about first came to San Jose. Uh, when I first came to San Jose, I mean, that's pretty much the first job I got. It was bouncing, um, you know, different clubs. So, I mean, it it really it really gets you to, you know, your, your schedule. You know, you can go work out during the day, do whatever you have to do during the day. And then at night, I mean, you pretty much work, you know. And then you pretty much you have the whole day to train. So it was it was a pretty, it was, I mean, it, just for as far as, you know, getting money and uh, keep my schedule, you know, good. It was a, it was a good job. But as far as, you know, the work goes, um, you know, just dealing with, you know, drunk people, you know, every day, it's, it just gets tiring, you know. But, uh, I mean, I liked it, you know. I think I was I was a pretty calm guy, you know. I never really got into it with anybody, you know. I, I knew how to talk to people, you know. Just, you know, people are drunk, so you just got to tell them that, you know, what they're not doing is, uh, what they're doing is not, you know, is not okay, that, you know, they need to leave. So I, you know, I talked to them professionally and, uh, you know, take care of the, the, the situation, so it was good. So you never viciously bitch slapped anyone while you was a... No, I never, I never hit anybody, you know, doing... Don't tell, I never viciously bitch slapped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never viciously uh, bitch slapped somebody uh, working, you know, working as, as a bouncer. Um, there's no need for that, you know, people are going out to have a good time and they you know, understand that, you know, um, there's no need to, to cross that line ever. <laughs> I could have used that one. I never viciously bitch like that. <laughs> that was classic, my bro. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. I Courteous that bouncer. That's very, that's I know, cool. I know. You know, you talk about viciously bitch like but you never did it. It's cool. Um, when did you get out of the bouncing game? I got out of the bouncing game probably, I'd say a year and a half ago. It's been a while. Yeah, probably a year and a half ago. Um, since, like, it's probably... A couple of months before my first UFC fight, that's when I stopped. How was you able to, to do that? What was the... Uh... Um, I was able to just stop bouncing. You know, my, my coach, uh, Javier Mendez, he pretty much told me, you know, you're not bouncing anymore. And that was the end of it. So, you know, he's a coach. You can listen to your coach and uh, pretty much stop. How was you able to do with the financialities on the work? Um, it was, you know, pretty, uh, the financial, st with the, yeah, when I stopped bouncing, the financial stuff, I mean, pretty much, it was easy, you know, just, uh, I have to, you know, just pay rent, and that's pretty much it, so. You live in Campbell, right? Yeah.